one. Episode four. Last week we had Tony Dorigo, week before that Luke Gale. This week we've got Mr. Wakefield. I don't even know this guy, but every, <laughs> everybody who I've spoke to this week from Wakefield knows him. It's Keith Brook. Nice to have you here. Thanks, thanks for, for coming. Thanks for having me on the uh, celebrity sofa. So we've had Luke Gale, Tony Dorigo, now little old me. I feel like we're going backwards here, boys. Um, well, I did until I started asking a few questions about you, but I mean, I, I'm a well known lad. Yeah. People know me, but. You are well known. <laughs> I've asked everybody who I knew around here that had any connection to training this weekend, and every single one of them knew who you were. That was not so. wrong with that, is there? Um, but yeah, I enjoyed that Luke Gale one. It was right up my street, that. Two down to earth blokes talking about rugby league and, and me. Don't get more man- manly than that, does it? When he first started asking me to do this, I genuinely 100% thought my mates will absolutely rip me to bits about this. Who do you think you are, Bennett? This animal. <laughs> but you know something? we've had a good reaction to it and it, I think it's uh, I think people don't have enough conversation full stop as I, like you know. I said that last time I spoke to Josh um, it's just it's just not known anymore everything's text or whatsapp or facebook that's it? it you're turning into a nation of mutes which will never happen to me because I can't keep my mouth shut <laughs> <laughs> we got new mics this week as well by the way these are the new uh, testing one two 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 <laughs> why do people always do that you know when you used to be in club when you were a kid why did they always go two two Two, two. You know, like one, 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 two. Why did they do that? Why? Testing, testing. <laughs> Testicles, one, two. <laughs> That's what they used to do, isn't it? But anyway, rugby league background. Yep, yeah. Tell us who you played for. Oh, God. Testing my memory now. Um, I was just saying to you before, I want to back off, off, off Luke's, tales, uh, Luke's story last week, which um, which I could adapt to. It, it, it were good, really, because he uh, down to earth lad. He seemed a cracking bloke as well, by the way. Uh, grew up in Middleton, rough area, and I grew up in Painfort, which probably made Middleton look like Dubai. It were really rough at the time, and I got into um, into rugby at twelve year old, Kigleston All Blacks, and I had I had one set of friends what'd sit at shop every night and get pissed like you do at that age. And then I had one set of friends what played rugby and he used to take up a lot of my time. We'd play Tuesday, uh, train Tuesday, Thursday, play on a Saturday. Um and don't get me wrong, I'd still be sat on that shop some nights, but rugby league was were sending me in, in right direction. Um and then I went on to play another twenty five year, played for some cracking clubs, brought nearly every bone in my body and met loads of good people and way and played round country. I absolutely loved it at one point in my life, but can eventually, you still get a game all, out? all good things have to come to an end. I was starting to get niggles every every week then, and I thought, do you know what? I've brought nearly everything. What's next? My neck or back? And I just I decided to call it a day. Well, that's fair enough. But you seem you seem like you're in good shape. You're in be- I'm I'm uh, I've signed up for a 10k run. I might need some help from somebody like you. Cause yeah, in shout, me mate. me in my life, anything to do with business or work, I always seem to. I hate losing. I'll keep going and going and going and going until I win. Yeah. But with fitness, I'm a, I'm a serial quitter. Yeah. I am, honestly. I think yeah. I've put that much into my work life. Training, there's always... I always have a better reason to go for a pint than to go to the gym, if you understand what I mean. I, like, yeah. I think, oh, I can always put it off. But this year, I've promised Josh, I've promised my mum, I've promised Sam yeah. that I'm going to get some weight off. And I'm gonna do some. I've been watching you both. You've been doing pony race course a little bit. Still can't get all the way around. Yeah, it's it's a decent trick. Like, what is it in miles? That anyway. Two point two. Yeah. Exactly two point (laughs) two. But baby steps, mate, isn't it to start with? I I, yesterday I went out. I had a few pints yesterday. I went uh, to St Patrick's Day Parade in Leeds. Yeah. And a good friend of mine, Craig McKenna, he's he's seen what we've been doing on Aces Phil. I've known you since you were a kid. I'm going to do Leeds one with you. Well, I'd had a few pots, so I've shook on that as well. So I'm doing Leeds as well now. I, <laughs> I wish that, I could keep that my Leeds one's meant to be quite easy, actually, because it's flat. You do the Wakefield one, and it's up a big hill, that one. I've only done I've only done the Wakefield one, so I'm just going off what people are saying, but I think the Leeds one's a little bit easier. It'll people be easier for time. me. I'm going to do it on a Segway. <laughs> 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 no, I've got a lot of work to do, so I might be coming in and uh, coming for some PTs with you, Anytime, see what I can mate. do. Anytime, do you, do you, you were telling me, Josh, that you do a bit of boxing as well in your time. Well, what it is with boxing is like, what happened to start with is me and Alistair, that's my business partner, is in Dubai now. We signed up for the white collar box. You've heard of that? It's mm. like a chat. You sign up for eight weeks. Oh, I've done it. Um, right. Yeah. And um, so basically what happened, we both signed up for that to do it. And the training was horrendous. I, w- I won't name drop, but it was a little gym in Batley. And it, it was so bad, you know. So the promoter come down to our gym. because you should do it here. Let us do it for you. Um, so what we were going to do originally is get a boxer in and he let us down with two weeks to go I'm like what we're going to do I says we're going to have to do it mate 
So, you know, I'm, I hold my hand up. I'm not a boxer, but we learned the basics of boxing and we've had the contract ever since. Do a very good job. Um, and what I do do is get the best out of people. Um, so, the, Tom, the promoter, out of all shows that he does, is um, is is the Wakefield ones are always the fittest. So, uh, so yeah, we've had it about I don't know, about two and a half year now. We're in about hundred grand just through our gym, doing it. So yeah, I've I've done uh, four white collar boxing matches, just like a bit of a charity thing. That, and I, I really I, I love boxing. I've got yeah. like loads of my mates at the Unslip Boys Club. Yeah, and uh, obviously Dennis Robbins, Daz Rhodes, and they are boxing mad. They're like yeah. it's a prop, and you know little slight thing they probably did wrong with me was they tried to teach me like they do a yeah. really really good amateur yeah and really what you need for that white collar is just a heart get your head down and get stuck 100% in agree with I went you out I, was, I fought Steve Price you know Leon Price I used to play for Bradford yeah. and that I fought his uncle Steve I'm not kidding you I went out like like thinking I were in Olympics, you boof, knock me head. Oh, give me it, honestly. <laughs> well, when I did it, we 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 were getting his own training, so there were there were um we it's a miss a bit with training, and it and it was horrendous anyway. And then we went back with two weeks ago, and he went, "Oh, you two still doing it?" I went, "Yeah." And there were two of them left over. They both had experience. One of them, Chris Anakin, who plays for Wakefield. I ended up getting him, and um, you know I had people around me. Benny being one of them, Brookies had him. You know, it's called Cannonball. It's Super League. Like, oh my god! But I was just playing it off. I was like, oh, it's all right. I'm not scared, mate. I'll give him a, I'll give him a good fight. And I did. I got, I got more of a buzz out of fighting someone who were well respected. It, it, it whipped me ass in last round, by the way. But first two, pretty even, and then he put me on my ass in the last round. But I had a lot of people around me who, who were knowing that I was going to get beat up. But I didn't really get beat up until last round, so I got more of a buzz out of fighting someone like that. Well, right? when I fought Steve Price, I was the only person who thought I was going to win. Everyone yeah. knew I was going to get chinned, but <laughs> yeah. I swear to God, the only thing I didn't do was go down. I got yeah. about nine standing counts. Yeah, I think he's, I think he had the magnets in his gloves as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you've uh, got to take it out to anybody who, who jumps in the box. When you get in that ring, it just gets smaller. Yeah. You get in and you just think, oh shit, there is absolutely nowhere else to go here. I yeah. once did one. I once did one, right, at Anglers Club. And uh, these mates of mine said, yeah, do it. well, you do it, Phil. You jump in like, oh yeah, I'll do it, yeah. This kid who'll come to fight me was the local debt collector. <laughs> they went, do you know, I'm not even going to mention his name because he'll probably be in trouble with police anyway and yeah. he might come looking for me and chin me. <laughs> but uh, I got us there. So they said, my mate says, Phil, do you know who you're fighting today? I went, well, yeah, but they said he's about three stone lighter than me. He went, yeah, but you're a fat twat. He went, he's hard. I'm telling you, he's going to knock your head off. Yeah, well, that's what I was getting all that, and it plays with your mind a so little bit. So, my mate Neil, who works with us, he's like my dad, thinks world of me. He's gone in the toilet, one of the lads has said to him, what is Phil doing getting in the ring with him today? You do know he's going to get it, don't you? Neil, like, is he? And I went, yeah. So, Neil come out of the toilet, so I went, Oh, I nearly went, yeah, don't worry, son. He'll be fine. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got a draw. I got stuck oh, into him. I went, I went, all right. Yeah. I, I actually, and you know something? Every time he sees me, we're like that now, I'm, which is handy, because yeah. he's like you. He's a Similar man who can get stuff sorted. Going, <laughs> you, you can, uh, I like playing against my mates in rugby. It's like you get the thumb in the eye, elbow in the face, and it, it's just a bit of banter. And I've ended up scrapping my mates on the field before and just laughing about it after. Do. But it, it's how you earn respect out of... Out of other players, how many t times have you had run-ins with other players then you've seen them in Leeds and then it's buying each, each other a drink at bar and that's, that's Did you play for Charleston? Yeah, I finished at Charleston, yeah. They were a tough team, Charleston. We had a really good team when I finished up there. We were just Did you play with a kid who still plays for Unslit now? He's always got a defensive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He loves his rugby him. And I can't believe he's still going. The once played Unslit happy. Warriors at Featherston in a final and he elbowed my mate Jim Bob inside the head. Jesus Christ, he nearly knocked him into next week. <laughs> yeah, he's but he's been a good yeah. player. Yeah, he's still yeah, going strong. Yeah, yeah. Got a good physique on him and that. He looks, yeah. He's dirty yeah. though, isn't he? Better, better <laughs> he honest to God, he's yeah. always getting sent off. At, yeah, he doesn't need to do it really. But, <laughs> get, but you never got no at Charleston. Charleston, we've to, said to you honestly. They were my problem, my favourite years when uh, when we finished at Charleston. We, Did we, some of the players used to get paid there? Didn't they have a backer? Yeah, it's like we, we used to have a couple of players that used to travel, travel over from Bradford, so it was only a bit of a, a month, petrol money and stuff like that. Um, I think Miles were one of them. It was John, a, a, a local builder, one day. We used to just you know, Cal Savile. Yeah, no, Sav, yeah, yeah. 
He was a good player. Yeah, savoir. So and it's, it's massive now, and it's too big to play rugby now. Is, is it yeah, well, he's one of them lads, him. He's just a natural. If he played snooker, he'd be good at snooker. Yeah. Golf, he'd be good at yeah. golf. He's just yeah. a sport, Billy, I call him. But yeah, we, we drew Julesbury in Challenge Cup, beat Julesbury. Yeah, they're a good team of Charleston. And good. then we got we got Oldham in next round. Lost. They were only 12 0 at half time to Oldham, and then they ran away with it a bit in second half. What but, position do you play? Uh, second row centre. Bit oh, of yeah. both, really, yeah. Yeah. But mm. I got better as I got older, and then it, and then I was just knackered. Then my body had gone. So. So what's the form now? You've got a gym. Yeah, I've got a gym, personal trainer, and just just love it really. I'm passionate about it. It's train hard every day, and then and do as many sessions as I can a week. Do you have like PTs coming through all the time? I've got uh, a few PTs what work for me as well. Oh as dear. It, yeah, there's two part time and two full time. So. Yeah. And whereabouts is it? Fawns Lane, Wakefield. We're sort of outgrowing that gym now. It's like we're, we're just getting an extension price to put only extra mezzanine um, at the moment. But well, if anybody amazing. knows me who does that, make sure you do them a good price. Yeah, but it's a big deal to just rip everything out and put it into a new unit. You've got to redo all the toilets and all that. So sort of time with what the five-year plan is at the minute. But I think for now, we're just going to get uh, extend the mezzanine, maybe get a boxing ring in there, and that'll attract a few more members. You might be able to help me out and send a few to my uh, shop at Albury, Anthony's. Well, that's a good little place, Albury. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah, it is, definitely. If you can send some of your punters there, tell them to go on your recommendation, and we'll make sure they get looked after <laughs> yeah, yeah. royally. I was going to pick your brain about something, actually. I was watching you and Josh walk around Leeds Market of a week, and yeah. you were telling him your history about um, how you grew up there as a kid. And I'm in some of these Facebook groups for Wakefield, and I bite in there a lot because it's just full of negative people slagging Wakefield off, and I'm Wakefield through and through, mate. And I've worked all around the country, and I know Wakefield is miles and miles away from being some of the shitholes that there is in the country. And some of the old school people in there, that all they talk about is the old market and like they're, they're just saying it's not same without the market but do you think it would work with a market now in Wakefield because that's all they talk about they're absolutely obsessed with it like it's not same since they took the market away and I think I don't even think a market would work anymore the problem they have is the messed about with market system in, in Wakefield I went and looked at it myself because they were looking for people in new shops the problem is these people have no passion who have no knowledge whatsoever about being in the market, come and they redesign it and they wonder why it won't work. Mm. Leeds Market at the moment needs a, a, a management board, half of them the best traders from Leeds Market yeah. and half of them from council. <laughs> but what they do is they don't go to... They, if somebody's making money in a market now, they're a very, very good trader. So answer to your question is, would a market work in Wakefield? I honestly believe if they went into Leeds Market and got five good traders, not necessarily I have to be one of them, yeah. and said, could you help us design a market in Wakefield um, with some help of people who are a bit more forward thinking, then I think it could work. I think street food works, market trading works mm. with a twist. That's how I, I'm right. 100% certain if you said to me, Phil, could you help us design a market it's down to one location two traders and three being accessible but I'm 100% certain I could do that right. easy right. Leeds market just it's all the ingredients for it to be successful are there it's, the problem is that was the supermarket for the whole of Leeds and what they've done it's that vast mm -hmm. now it's so diluted is the trade I mean there were no Aldi there were no Lidl there were no there were very few Morrisons and, and Asda. This is what I mean. People need to realise that that, that that this is one of the reasons why I don't think it'd, it'd work like it used to do. That That's what I say about the forward thinking bit. So if if you got, say, 30 traders who commit to trading three market days a week in Wakefield, and they were all... I see some people now on, on my Facebooks, um, market traders that do fruit and veg outside. Yeah. 12 months ago, if I'd have said to them, you want to do a Facebook page, they'd have said, get away. They're old school. Yeah. If everybody promoted what they've got, so Fishman puts his order on, Butcher puts his on, Towelman says we're doing three of these cotton towels a tenner, so, and everybody posted, and everybody gets behind it. The problem with markets is the traders all bitch amongst themselves. Right. They work against each other. Yeah. And and there'll be some people listening to this who'll say, well, I don't know how he can say it, because I've had more fallouts in market than you'll yeah. ever imagine. Mm -hmm. But... The idea is to work for the market, not 
just for obviously you're there to make money for you and you put yourself first but if everybody pushed together and everybody were promoting like you just said there the only comments you hear about a market are negative yeah. ones yeah if everybody in Wakefield were saying how good it was yeah everybody would be going to Wakefield because the, the problem with our culture is a bad word goes further than a, than a good word a yeah. hundred good words will only add up to one bad word I, I can get a million comments on my Facebook and then I get one arsehole who instead of private messaging me I'll put yeah. some on oh yeah there's no and, worse and then that one message goes viral because everybody I'd prefer it if they didn't stand up for me because yeah. do you understand what I'm trying to say so if everybody in Wakefield do we want to make Wakefield great again yeah, let's do it. That's mm. what we're trying to do with me. And yeah. if everyone says your gym's good, they've got your everyone. There's a there's a negative vibe in British culture. I 100%. think. Hundred percent. I agree with you that. Know, we've got to be a bit more like we've got to stick to being British, but be a bit more American. If let's someone's be in the nice. same trade as you, either it don't mean that you have to be rivals and you can't speak to each other. Like I speak to Gaz a lot. He's got his um, he's got his little setup over there, at Ponty, and then there were another lad, Danny, who, who, who had a gym in Wakefield, and it was like two minutes from mine. But I still got boxing lessons off him. Do you know you do, it? Don't have to be like a rivalry just because no. you're in the same. Trade. You can work together. You can yeah, work together on a lot of things, and until the the only thing that stops people working together is you always get one who stabs you in the back. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. I I let a company into mine. Tried to work together with them. Yeah. Try ripping me off. Get yeah. out. See you later. Yeah. But if they'd have just been right with me, yeah. the kind of people can have anything from me. Just, just be straight. Just be down line. That's all you need to be. But people get greedy. It's one of the worst. Uh, Do you find that you you pick, you pick up on that though? Are you a good judge of character? And you can sort of tell. My Sometimes problem you get is. Wrong, don't you? My problem is everybody's on a yes until yeah. they give me a reason for a no. Mm. I trust people. I like people. I take people on face value, and I expect same back. But. Yeah. It's when they let me down, it really, really, really annoys me. I, don't, I just don't think I deserve it. I don't like it. Yeah. I, I, you know, especially in business, you try to help people. Is that another, you know, have I ever played a bad card? Of course I have. Yeah. We all have. Nobody's an angel, but I'd like to think I've done more good things than bad. And if yeah. you work together on things, you know, I'm, I'm certain it works. And getting back to your question about, Wakefield Market and Wakefield Town Centre if everybody was saying it if as many people who were saying it's good as what are saying it's bad there'd be more people going wouldn't there simple this is, as that this is totally true yeah. look at Leeds United at a minute there were, there were crowd were down to 20,000 everybody's talking about good things you can't get a ticket yeah. I cannot get a ticket for Villa game yeah it's, that's just that's just it that's the, we need to be more positive forward thinking and just start being happier I totally agree. Simple That's me that. all over, though. It's like good vibes only with me. I've never ever met you before in my life. Yeah. And I'm sat here talking. If you were, if there were a negative vibe, it wouldn't be happening. And yeah, exactly. You know, that's it, basically. Yeah. So I'll be coming to see you to do a bit of training with you. Sounds good. How much is it a lesson? I better not say any. I'll sort you, I'll sort you a good deal out. <laughs> I only asked him on camera because I knew he'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to help me along. I promise I'm going to do Ponty 10k. And I promised Craig McKenna that I'm going to do at Leeds 10k now. And I've got a lot, a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, meat packs, I want your help with that. I want you to try and push people into our Aubrey shop. And in return, we'll... Uh, Is that the nearest pickup point from, from where I am then for the... We're, we're not far. We're only Aubrey off Aubrey's Arms like Road. not far from, from my And they do a good job in that shit. It's a lovely community around there. And yeah. to be fair, I concentrate that much on... Because it's, like, it's called after my daddy's, that shop. It's called Anthony's. And I don't, I don't know why I just sort of like leave them to their own thing. And staff there must think he never really promotes us as much. So we want to work a little project with you where your butchers, his Anthony's in Aubrey, and start sending them in. And then we'll look after who you meet. And we'll look after whoever you send. You know, good. we'll give them a good yeah. good little discount and give them some good quality. Which one is it on there? Is it as you drive? Opposite co op. It's got the blue canopy. It's oh, the yeah, side yeah. of that really fancy jewelers. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's a lovely little shop. I bought yeah. it about six years ago and I've got great staff in there girl in there called Julie anybody from Aubrey knows Julie because she never ever shuts she makes me sound like a mute she never shuts up can't stop talking but everyone knows but it's a good little community that good few boozers nice little village my brother lives there Aubrey's nice that's why house prices are quite as yeah the deer there aren't they I looked myself like but out of my league then not for me 
Anyway, what else do you want to talk about? Uh, you can edit this bit, can't you? Don't worry about this. Yeah, bit. yeah. Because you do lose yourself sometimes. Exactly, yeah. I think we've flawed. Have so you have... Far, uh, is equipment in your game a big bind? Because it looks expensive now, like that gym gear. To be honest with you, the, the, the equipment doesn't really date much. Like... Uh, we've started getting a few bits in there, like a lot of functional equipment. Um, we've got like an air bike in there now and a ski machine. Is that one of them watt bikes? Yeah, yeah. Um, but like your old school bodybuilding equipment, don't really date because it's, it's steel, you know. Um, so yeah, you've got to you've got to keep up with some equipment. But like obviously, you've got the new gym at Norman and the Ultraflex. have got a machine for absolutely everything, but it's nothing you can't do without a barbell or a dumbbell. Do you know what I mean? It's just same Some that equipment in that Ultraflex is insane. Though. Yeah, yeah. But, My machine's but, not working in there. But what, sorry? My vending machine, it's not working. <laughs> oh, is it not working? They're not sorry. The, the gourmet packs yeah. are flying out. But I, I don't know what it is. I'd never got what was wrong in my life. I thought that machine... You mentioned had, that, though, didn't you, Josh? He says, I, don't, I, I was asking about it last time I spoke to Josh. I said, oh, cracking idea, but... Josh Do you know what? I've sit and watched them and I've studied and I've come to this conclusion to go to train they ain't gone to shop yeah. I went, and the reason I know is I once had my shop in Morley and the first year that we were open there on the night that we did Christmas light turn on I shut the shop at 3 o'clock I reflashed it all up cut loads and loads of meat did it all made it all mint Yeah. you know how much we took go on £28 oh, crap. The, and there's never any more people yeah. on Queen Street in Morley than that night and you know why we didn't take no money they just want their shop. It's not yeah. that they want in the mindset. You know what? While I'm here, I'll shop. I fought the wood, and I thought steaks in a gym would be like water at the end of a marathon. Yeah. But yeah. you know, some are, they're just there. The only thing I've watched them when they're training, I've watched them when they leave, and the only thing they're thinking about when they come out of that that two minute thing of coming out of a gym is two things: rehydration's one of them. Yeah. Maybe a protein drink and getting home. Yeah. That's it. They're not. They're not thinking. There's a there's a guy who I follow actually on there who trains there and he posts a lot about that machine. It's called Billy or something. Billy Payne, but yeah, yeah he's, he's a mate of mine. Yeah, he's always um, doing posts about it. it. It's it it's not worked. It, it's not taking as much as nowhere near as much as what we wanted. But the packs are flying out. So I think what we're gonna do as a team is just reach out to gyms, take some priceless, and give a discount to gym members so we could do it with our gym or yeah. put. And I think people are more at chance of picking that up and thinking you know what I'll give that a try or maybe if they buy a protein drink or a drink that that's that they get a leaflet and maybe 10% off that or whatever yeah. but the machine which I thought would be an absolute winner yeah no negative I've, I haven't even been in there to be honest with you I don't think it, I, I, I won't mind a session in there but I don't think it'll look good me going up there to train when I've got a gym of my own but well, mate, you see, well, members it. are starting to dribble back a little bit now it were like when it first opened we lost about 20 to L, like oh god if it had been any closer I think we'd have been in deep shit but because it were in Norman and it were still a little bit of distance to, to travel to but people are starting to come back I mean cracking equipment and stuff but when you've got a gym like that, people are coming from all over the place, so nobody knows each other. So there's a bit of a negative vibe in there, you know. Mm. People are checking each other out. There's no. I there seem it. to be serious, serious customers in there. Yeah. They're either built like uh, Eddie Hall or Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's no in between. <laughs> what the women? <laughs> I'm not saying all about them, but Jimmy. <laughs> but yeah, there's some. There's a dumbbell in there. It's 150 kilo. Oh, that's crazy, isn't it? But yeah. I think if they're at your gym, I'm presuming you're there a lot. I'm presuming yeah. you, you know, you get that uh, personal touch. And if you're doing out boxing and stuff as well, I, I'll be definitely coming because I, I, I must admit, I, I, I thank them at Ultraflex for giving me a chance with machine. But I feel inadequate there. I just feel like a, a cow or something walking around. <laughs> they're all absolute monsters. I think like I think with some of the uh, with the smaller places like. You feel more welcome, you know. I I know everybody's name and walk through that door. I ask them how they're doing every day, and like when you get into the big commercial place, you're just another number sometimes, aren't you? And nobody says hi to you and ask how your trainers going if you need any help. Or so. I see your uh, your kit there. That I, he's getting his word word about. Is it? Andy, I got yeah, doms off. Yeah. Man. Well, he showed me his brand like a few years ago, and I was like, oh yeah, it's all right. And he is just stuck to it and stuck to it and stuck to it. I'm watching so play with, with my wife. I'm like, oh look, Andy shorts there. They're bobbing up everywhere now. He, um, the top boxers. At, at Unslick Club, they've got um, a real 
real top quality amateur boxing gym. They've got Hopi it's Price. Got them, I've seen them bags in there. Yeah, and them, he yeah. give them some bags. They look really good. It's I give them. them. I presume so. Oh, yeah, I think for that. He didn't tell me that, but it just, I just I screenshot the picture and I said these are nice, and he sent me a prize. So. Listen, my mate Dennis Robbins is <laughs> is like he can get where water won't, mate. He won't <laughs> yeah. have paid for them, won't Dennis? <laughs> no, Dennis, don't you? He won't have paid. I'll tell you now. But uh, a club like that that does a lot for the community and stuff like that, that you know, they, they deserve. If there were more places like Hunslet Club, yeah, there'd be less trouble on the streets. No, it's rugby, boxing. Kid is dancing, boxer size. They have um, fruit it, what, day. Is it a community centre then? No, yeah, it's like yeah. a massive. Honest to God, that fruit day. You know, kids who are not who do can't behave at school and stuff like that. They educate them, so they get paid for that. So they teach them how to be mechanics, hairdressers, Sounds whatever. Cracking. But honestly, it's run like military from start to finish. Dennis has got it right. They've got top boxing. Some quality that they're turning out with boxing down there and rugby team are smashing it. Mm. To my, I mean, I'm one of the few people. I'm an unslit Warriors lad. That's where I played my rugby and that's yeah. my Cherwell rugby and unslit Warriors, they're my team. But I boxed and spent a lot of time at unslit clubs. So I'm one of the, I'm, they call me an in-betweener. Yeah. Because <laughs> they usually hate each other, but I'm, I'm big pals with them all down there. So it's, a, it's cool the right place. That. I know I'll be seem to be talking about rugby league, Phil, but that's what we've got in common, but it sounds of it. So what are your thoughts on them letting these amateur clubs fold all of a sudden? Like Queens have just gone, Westgate, um, who else? And they're just, they're all falling through net. And I think rugby league sort of, on its ass a little bit if I'm honest as much as I use my iPhone for business and this that and other I'm working towards that I think the iPhone is a massive cancer on what we're doing I've got my daughter's 12 year old and I'm trying to get her into outdoors going out because yeah. all the one you know before I can remember even when I played there were miles more teams like where I'm from now Cherwell rugby's folded that were close to me yeah and even driggling so really there's driggling and that is the best club if you live in morley so this and other you'd go to drig now and even they're struggling for numbers there's just mm. kids don't want to do yeah. it no more and i won't even say there's, there's that much more to do it's not like another sports coming so, to do, do, so do you put it down to the kids not wanting to do it for, i just think yeah. we've got um, we're getting um, lazy yeah we're getting a lazy culture we used to have a waiting list for Saturday jobs you just have a, a list on all the kids I can't remember the last time somebody even come and asked for a Saturday job mm, yeah. kids are kids have their ass wiped for them too much now and they're like me my dad were like no you're going and doing something whether it be football rugby boxing I played football rugby boxing cricket I was crap at football I was decent at cricket average at rugby and mm. But I had to do summer. Yeah. Don't you, do you, have you got kids? Yeah, I've got one at 11 and one at three. And do you make them do summer? Uh, uh, what I'm doing, he plays football twice a week, does Alfie. But he's, he's, I've spotted about Josh this before. He's, there's no phone at table. He has got a phone. He's got Instagram. But who am I to say that he can't have Instagram when, when I've got I, Instagram? I, I've not against them having stuff. Yeah. But, but uh, they just definitely push them to, to get out and enjoy yeah. being a kid And apart a little bit. from that, if you haven't played rugby... Yeah. How many mates would you have? Not as many as I've got now. But I've got mates everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely everywhere. And if they're not close, I've got real, a good circle of really close mates. But even like people on our, I've, I had a shopping cast, Ponty. I see lads who I used to play against, so I know of people stuff to do with rugby, this and other. All right, it's a community. And mm. if you don't get them into something, then you, you, you're giving them less chance of having a lot of mates as well. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true, you know, that? I'm. I, um, why they ain't as many is because I, I think parents now, it, it might be a bit of a raw subject this, but you know it's almost like you can't say to your kid you are doing something. Yeah. My dad had make, make, you know it want yeah. it want an option. I could do what I want, but yeah. I had to do something. Now they're allowed to just sit there. I'm sorry, but you, you know, know they're all you pain, they're all buttering their own bread, and they're yeah. just. We're going to finish up with psychological problems, no mates, being it too into yourself. I've, I've had to almost ban phones from living room in our house because yeah. one night, my mum were in that chair, my wife were in that chair, Molly were in that chair, and I'm in this, and we were all on his phone. Nobody was even watching It's telly. funny that because I was eating my tea with my son yesterday and Charlotte 
No, no, I, I was waiting for my tea. Charlotte took a picture of us both. We were, but he went one end at the kitchen table, I went over and we were both just like that. I should just put What sat. did we all do before it? Yeah, what did it's, we it's all, not cool You know, look, you it. see someone, and in a lot of ways it's great, but we are getting addicted to them. We're getting a real, I mean, there'll be people watching this now saying, I don't know how you do that, Phil, because you're never off Facebook. I know, it's exactly the same but as me, but. It's just one of them. He, he would got, <sighs> getting back to your question about rugby clubs, that's what I think the problem is. Do you know what? Well, you've opened my eyes. I've never looked at it like that. It's, it's crazy thinking that, isn't it? I think you've got to make If kids aren't do. coming through, the, the clubs are not going to be able to stay up, are they? So. And another thing that's absolutely blowing my mind about rugby is we're on verge of girls' rugby getting bigger than I've men's noticed, rugby. I've noticed that, yeah. It's, it's everywhere I, now, isn't it? Honest to God. The, and they're so enthusiastic about it that... I, I'm not going to lie to you before I like girls playing rugby but yeah. I've actually got to know some of girls who play rugby now they come in the shop and stuff yeah. and you know some of the more enthusiastic and into it than yeah. rugby when I played rugby that were all that were on my mind all, I just loved being part of the team being yeah. with my mates and get, them girls they've got that community thing. It's, it's almost a chore now for there's not you know if you played for Hunslet Warriors we had a right we had a good set of mates were we the best team in the world no but yeah. we had a we were a togetherness if it were one and all in and we were all pals and we all used to have a beer and all go training yeah. and now I see it lads they finished training that's it they go don't yeah. even have a beer in clubhouse yeah yeah that's don't it. work anymore there's no community and, and like I was saying to you earlier on I know I talk a lot but people don't talk enough yeah you know, if I were desked, I were going to get involved with Unsolid Warriors at one point, but I just don't have time as much as I'd love to. The first thing I'd instill is, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have a feed after training. Everybody, yeah. you don't have tea at home, you have tea. Yeah. And start bringing, you know, so then everybody has to have at least three quarters of an hour. Just, what does it cost for a big chilli? Everybody has a feed. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Thursdays we watch Super League game together. Yeah. And that, that don't have to mention about tactics or out you're just together and you have a chat and your mates because then you get that bit of togetherness and you want to and you play. just know if you've got kids and they're not doing out that that they're missing out massively don't massively. you yeah. my daughter I'm trying and trying and trying and she has no interest she's she's a girly girl she don't like rugby don't like boxing don't yeah. like football don't like horse riding she's frightened of horses <laughs> I'm trying my best with her but I have to find her Cause you, you know, because you, you de de denying them a chance of m many, many friends. And yeah. I've got, if I didn't play rugby and I'm on, like, into my job and stuff, it would be my mates. Imagine then going from there to being on your phone all the time and being in house all the time and then getting a job when you're older that you work from home. And your whole life's just at home. Uh, yeah, yeah. I finish up being a right nerd. Yeah, it's but true. Anyway, that's... Uh, Deep subject. <laughs> Maybe we should have the last. <laughs> <laughs> it rolled on a bit that one, didn't it? But never mind. Um, but it's good to hear different opinions on stuff like that. Like I've never, never thought that, like you said, the kids not being interested in going to these clubs, and you're all right blam blaming the top of rugby league. But if no no kids want to play, what can you do? Mm. The schools. It all needs to be brought in in schools. Schools are more obsessed now, and I think it's just touching news now. The more obsessed with all kids having the best grades which I totally understand but they teach every kid like they should have uh, should be a solicitor but you know sport and stuff it's it's not as important they ain't as much in budget you look at sports in Australia in private schools um, in America it's, it's at the forefront it's one of the yeah. first things that, that you know they have to be good at if you're if you're a big part of the team or you're a big player in America that you can go to a private school for free yeah. they'll, they'll invite you because you're good at sport what do we do in England sort of fizzling away isn't it yeah yeah, yeah I mean we played you know being part of school team were you know first thing wasn't it you, yeah. I can remember went to high school my dad have you got in football team son yeah I did I'll crap at football but I'm going and then have you got it rugby team yeah you know what well, first thing yeah. now and I know private school none of my kids go I, I, you know like, but I know friends whose kids are at private school and it's seven or eight hours a week of, of training really I know my mate who moved to Australia sport all the time sport 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 private and they give the, the Meckham have a go at everything like his kids worked out that he's brilliant at tennis they, have, they give them tennis, they give them a chance. You've got to give kids chance, haven't you? How do, they don't even know what they want to do. Yeah. 
So, I think in this country, sport needs to, and, and it's all about positive thinking. You got to get more positive about things, and that's that's where we we're, we're failing. It's yeah. grades, 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 grades. What, what do you think? Do you think like? Obviously, I've mentioned this before about like the nightlife on its ass because people, uh, kids want to train and get abs instead of going out and getting drunk like we did at 16, 17, 18. I'm wondering whether kids are wanting to just go straight to the gym instead of playing you sports know, Summer, anymore. I, my daughter's 12 and I wanted to take her to to gym. And they was, they, I asked, uh, you'll know Eddie, won't you? Fit, Formula Fitness. Is that Norman then? Formula Fitness. Oh, Ponty that, isn't it? Uh, Everyone knows yeah. Eddie. I, I know the, uh, the, them Robinson twins train there, don't they? Oh, is it? Right, all right. No, sorry, I don't but know. But he, he was saying, like, the, for insurance reasons, they can't train there till they're 16. I think the man who opens a kid's gym that's, you know, you, you can go till you're 16. Yeah. I think they might conquer. I'd take my daughter to Well, like people that. message me and they say, oh, I'm, I'm said they can come down at 13, 14, 15 if they're with you. Uh, so I've got a couple of guys what do the classes and they've got lads who are still at school and they do my kettlebell class but as long as they're with the, the parents or their uncle and that it'll be fine yeah that, I think I so think a, what they're doing and a kids sure sports academy stroke gym type of thing mm. it might take a bit of getting going yeah. but and another thing as well these kids you know I can remember my coach and he, he could make you feel 10 feet tall you know, if you, you get a load yeah. of little kids and you get a bloke like you who's in good shape and yeah. this and other, giving them a bit of praise and a bit... 100%. They'll yeah. just love it, you know, and it'll be big for their esteem, their mental health. I mean, yeah. me mental health now, amount of mates I've got that are struggling with mental health, and a lot of that is down to... I, th I think a lot of it's down to just sat there like that. Don't you think, bro, right that this mental health and anxiety thing, it's like a lot of people are getting... The, the, it taken away from them because the people are just saying that the 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 they're mentally off and they've got anxiety because it's sort of like a fashion now. So if you said to me, oh, I'm, I'm feeling a bit fed up and that uh, lately, Brookie, to be honest with you, I've got anxiety and that. You hear it so much that it'd probably go for a one year out over. Ten years ago, if you'd have said, oh, I, I could do with someone to talk to me, I'm fed up. I'd be like, well, here I am, mate. Let's let's chat. But. I think a lot of people are saying it for the wrong reasons, if you get what I mean. Yeah. It's, and it's taking, away, it's taking it away from the people who have got problems. I agree with that, but I also think if you're a bit savvy, I was with a mate of mine yesterday and I could clearly see that he wasn't happy. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I could say, and I said to him, listen, you know, if, if you want to go for a talk or a beer or all like that, let me know. And I totally agree with what you're saying. I think mm -hmm. some people do jump on bank, yeah. back of it, but you can see in somebody's eyes if they're that yeah. way out. I mean... I, I suffered with a, a little bit last year. I want myself at all, and I had a bit of a bit of a meltdown. Like, but yeah, I feel a million times better. I spent a bit of time with Josh. I talked to him. Done a, started doing a bit of training. Got active. My I've, people will say, God, "You're always at it with your business." Yeah, but I've really stepped to it this year. I've never felt more positive and happy. And I'm at it. You yeah. know, I had a massive change with moving over here. I was drinking too much. I yeah. want in a good place at all, and I, I'm I'm starting to get a bit of weight off now. Good. I want to get free stone off. I'm going to a beefer with my mates at end of September. Brilliant. And I know you used to be a bit of part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to a beefer end of year. That's I'm getting too old well, for it. Every time I go, I say that's last time, but I'm going this year. I, I've never Sunday. ever been. Yeah. Never been. I, I'm not. I'm a boozer, me. I'm not a party animal. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want free stone off. I don't. I won't get my top off in front of people, but I at least want to be able to wear a vest and get into something that's like XL to XL. Yeah. But I want to have a good time. Is it, going to this? Is it called Ushwire or something? Oh it's yeah, like pool party. Push, yeah. No, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be there. Big Phil will be there. <laughs> I'll be. I'll stand out like a saw from me. I'll tell you now. I'll be only one that's up in a pint. I don't of think it. you can go there and not enjoy it. To be honest with you, but uh, you might not enjoy it drink drink prices when you get in there. Like, I couldn't give a monkey as long as I've got <laughs> tetlies on. I'll pay six quid a pint. I couldn't give a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never been anywhere like that. I went to Vegas last year. I went to uh, that uh, Omnia pool party. Yeah. I've never seen no. My mate says to me, "What's up with you, Phil? You don't seem right." I says, "What's up with me?" I there's that much to take in I can just sit there and watch yeah, me yeah. money that we're getting spent and yeah, these young lads and birds everywhere are like wow I've never ever seen that like yeah. like I've been brought up on just work markets work work, work. I'm not really a holiday person man. like my wife goes nuts with me yeah because she really likes it but I've given this year I'm going to Tenerife for 10 days in July and yeah. then we're going to we're going to 
uh, what's it, Ibiza. Brilliant. I'm going to go and pretend I'm young again. Isn't it? I've it's always been the other way around, even when I were working for me next to no. Some I've of your always, mates have told me this I've, week. I've always <laughs> got on holiday. Always. You used to do a bit of DJing as well, are you? Sometimes, yeah. Um, but what it is, when I met Charlotte, I, I, I got away from that lifestyle. And then one Christmas, she just bought me some DJ equipment. And now she moans that I sometimes do it again. I'm like, hang on a minute, you bought me the DJ equipment. Do you know my mate, Alex Simmons? Yeah, I know Simo, yeah, yeah. He was a good him. DJ in his time, wasn't Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. The thing is, with Simo, whatever he does, he does it big, didn't he? So. Yeah, you know Simo is, well, he's got his TV show and stuff like that. Is that far off cracking it. I, yeah. I, I think with Rugby League, it's ready for a freshen up. It's yeah. ready for, you know, like um, football, they got rid of old rear guard and they brought Gary Neville and Carragher in this. I think Rugby League is so ready yeah. for... Maybe someone like Alex, somebody to to freshen it up yeah, and yeah. make it more. Because like rugby league is in danger of going on the slide. You know, there's more. Do you not think it's already sliding? Yeah, I yeah. do, unfortunately. Yeah. And you know what it needs? It needs somebody. I heard a whisper that somebody like Eddie Earl. Yeah, I've heard that. I was going to mention that. Yeah. And it needs it. It needs to. I think. I think like you know, working men's clubs. Yeah. Working men's clubs have diminished and diminished and diminished. If they'd have gone with times a bit more, mm. and they'd have gone for it and, and evolved with the time, they'd still be thriving. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's cheap beer. If they'd just gone with it a little bit and, it, and brought and welcomed and embraced a bit of youth, yeah. it'd be miles better. But like rugby league, I'm still sure there's people like Eddie Emmons, people, old school people who hold who hold a lot of the the the, the what am I trying to say? The, the key the, to, the it, key to yeah. it all. Yeah. And and are not willing to just just let them have a yeah. go. Let these people have a go. And let make it more modern. Let's make it more fashionable. Let's make it a day out. Let's look at American football and try and bring a bit of that into yeah. it and get these kids interested. Full stop. Back, back to Simo though. He's, he's like a prime example of someone who's just stuck at something that he's passionate about. And uh, I went to that little setup he had to start with in just this little tiny lockup. And then I've just watched him evolve in his... So. Don't I tell you 100% truth? I once turned around to Simo and I said, listen, Jones gets a great career out of rugby. Yeah. You know, this is your career. I can't see it working. I'm going to tell you the truth. I can't see it working. And he turned around to me and said, thanks for saying that to me because I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah. And you know something? He has some fair play to him. Yeah. I'd have quit on it, but... I were only thinking of him from a, a view of security, yeah. but you know, Summit is that far off making it, and it, yeah. it, it is good for rugby. And Simo's one of them lads. If he says he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it, and that's it. It might not even be with rugby. Like his face is out there now. Some people, do you know what? He'd be perfect for this. You know, I'm gonna get him on podcast. He'll be good to podcast. We want yeah, Simo. Would, yeah. I definitely. might not get a word in Edgeways, like, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's about this time. Where's the hat? He's going to have to put the hat on. What's this? Everyone comes <laughs> has to put the hat on. <laughs> I've not heard of this one. And you, and you, you, you can't have been watching them all the way through. <laughs> we might as well just call this uh, the Rugby League podcast, mate. So that's... Rugby League. Oh, I have seen that one, yeah. You need to put the hat on. Make me great again. I want you to help me <laughs> with my Arbury shop. Sounds good. Does it suit me? Cushed it. Right, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. I've only known you for about 45 minutes, but I'm yeah. sure I'm going to see you again. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. Take Thanks care. very much. Now then, this is a new part of the show. This week we're going to do the uh, 32 ounce rump steaks. Now, this is how I prefer them, with a little bit of fat on them. But most clients want them cutting down, so they've got the, the fat off. And what I've done with these, I've got this uh, garlic flavoured olive oil, and I've, I've marinated them in that. I've done one with the, the pepper steak rub, and a little bit of the salt and pepper seasoning. We're going to be selling these this week at £7.50 per steak. Seasoned or unseasoned. Now I've pre heated my big pan. You know like people go on a big shop. I've got a big pan. So I'm going to do one with and one without. These are for me and Josh. I've just pre heated this pan so it's red hot. What people get wrong about steak is you need to bring it up to room temperature first. It's been on that side now for three hours. Bring it up to room temperature, give it a chance. This is top quality steak, get your pan red hot. In my opinion, a lot of people 
overcooked steak. Don't leave it in that pan forever and then come to me and say, I didn't like it, it was dry. Well, that's your own fault. I'm gonna try and get these medium rare. So pan red hot. Uh, I, I'm using the garlic olive oil. I like garlic, but that, that's just up to you. your favourite cut of steak if you to pick top three? Honest too? Top three. I like rum with a bit of fat round edge, that's my preference. Uh, after that it'd be ribeye, and after that it'd be braising steak done in gravy. People don't realise how to cook anymore, they don't give things time, like young people especially now, they don't have as much interest in cooking, but I like to cook. I know that I'm not as good as Oliver Sharp at Pontefract Golf Club, Al Lawson at uh, Cookridge Golf Club, so don't start texting and saying you don't do it like this, you don't do it like that. I know I'm not as good as you, I'm a butcher, but I'm doing my best, alright? Meat needs fat. People always want fat cutting off. Cut, cut it off afterwards, but you get the flavour out of the fat. It isn't fat that makes you fat. <laughs> fat don't make you fat. Lager does, trust me. <laughs> These steaks are on sale this week. £7.50 for 32 ounce. Price on meat, mm, with Brexit this time over, it could start going up before long. You might want to stock up on your meat before long. I'm going to do my very, very best to keep everything at right price for you. But I can only do what I can do.